Hello, uh, my name is John Cartacho and I'm the Scrum Master of Leo's team and I will be presenting to you Leo's 3.0 as it was presented on the last webinar that happened on the 25th of June 2020. Starting by our landing page, the repository browser, uh, the changes here were mostly related to the filters. So now the user can filter uh, based on templates and based on roles which he wasn't able to do before. And the other change was on the proposal card to open the proposal itself uh, before you had to uh, mandatorily go to the open button. Now you can click wherever on the, on the proposal card and it will open. So very subtle changes here. When we open the proposal, just as on version 2.1, we have the list of documents that compose the proposal. We have the management buttons on top to delete the proposal, to download it and extract the leg file or to export it to PDF. We have the collaborators management part where we can add or remove collaborators, uh, contributors or authors for this proposal. And we have the milestones list, which on version 2.1 was a simple list uh, of all the milestones that we had created before so far. Uh, but now on version 3.0, we have revamped this part and enhanced it quite a bit. But I will be detailing that later on the presentation. For now, I want to show you where the most changes occur, which was on the document view. And for that, let's open the legal text uh, and get further into detail on that part. When we open the document view, as before, we have the, the document that we just opened, in this case, the legal text. On the right hand side, we have the annotations. And on the left side, we have the table of content, just as before. And if you remember for version 2.1, to edit the table of content, you would have to do so in a pop-up window uh, to open the edition mode. And you would lose complete uh, notion of the document that you were editing and that you were uh, altering. We decided to revisit that and added an uh, addition mode to the table of contents so you can edit it in line. So now when we click on edit on the table of contents, you continue to see the document that you had before. You see the table of content just as in view mode, but you have the, all the inline elements that you can add to the, the table of contents. So for example, I can add a new citation, I can add a new recital, I can add articles, I can add parts. All that I could do before, I can do it now, but in an inline fashion. And as soon as I save, you will see that the renumbering algorithm uh, gets into work and I can check the changes that I did right away. So it's a much more user-friendly way of editing the table of contents. Talking about the annotations, as you can have already noticed, uh, we did quite some changes here. The most obvious one were the look and feel of the annotation cards. Uh, we also introduced the concept of annotation guidelines which can be enabled or disabled by a new button added on, on the sidebar. And that clearly demarks to which anchor the annotation relates to. So giving uh, a more user-friendly experience to the, to the drafter. We also uh, added on top of this, the concept of multiple annotation selection. So now the user can, by clicking on the annotation, select it and can select multiples and you can see that the anchors turn blue to clearly the, denote this, this behavior. To deselect them, the user can simply collect and click anywhere in the document and the annotations get deselected. Another improvement in terms of layout that we did was in terms of nested annotations, because if you remember before, we had only a single color to denote uh, all the anchors. So if we added nested annotations, you could not tell where one started and the other one ended. Uh, so by putting a darker tone in the nested, anno uh, nested anchors, you can clearly tell where the one starts and the other one ends. 
Another part that changed quite a bit in terms of annotations were the filters. So now the user can select only comments or only suggestions, can select annotations by author, which being only me, it's all the annotations are done by myself, can have full text search as before. So if you see, for example, inner, if I sell, type here inner, I will select only this annotation and only this guideline will be visible. And I can have a filter by group. As you can see, there is no groups here because all of these annotations are posted to collaborators, which mean that they are public, so no specific group. But if, for instance, I create a new annotation and I will call it, for example, test filter group and post it not to collaborators, but to TGT, you see that I have a new annotation here. And if I scroll up to the groups and I try to select and I, you can clearly see that I have a new group here and if I click it I select only that annotation so this denotes that the filters are not a search mechanism but rather as the name states a filter because it works on uh, in-memory data so mem uh, information that is already present on the on the screen and if you see on top you have here a summary of all the filters applied on the annotations so if I, for example, combine these three, so a comment posted to group DGT, which contains the text test, you see that this filter is combined here and the result is this annotation here. Another functionality that got improved with Leos 3.0 are the internal references. If you remember from Leos 2.1, the drafter could only create internal references within the same document. This meant that, for example, if the drafter was editing the legal text and wanted to create an internal reference, he could only do so over the elements that compose the legal text, so any element present on the table of content of legal text. We have improved this functionality and now the user is able to create internal references to any element of any document that composes the same proposal. So, for example, if I'm editing Article 2 and I want to create an internal reference to uh, an annex, for example, Annex 1 level or 0.5.1.1, I can open the internal references pop-up. I see here all the documents that compose the proposal except for the exploratory memorandum. I select Annex 1, I select the point that I wish to reference, and I see here the summary clearly stating that I'm an referencing Annex 1 and the point that I selected. If I click OK, I see the reference here. If I wish to reference, for example, another Annex, you will clearly see here that I'm referencing Annex 2, so there is no doubt of which document I'm uh, referencing with this new functionality. If I save, I can clearly see that now I have the references pointing to Annex 1 and Annex 2. It's important to mention also that if, for example, the annexes change their content, so any point or any article are added before the elements that I referenced, the internal references will get automatically updated just as before on Leos 2.1. So no need to manual intervention of the drafter to update the references. If you recall, earlier on the presentation, I mentioned that the Milestone Explorer got a big improvement. To show you that, let's assume that I'm the drafter and I'm editing the legal text and I did some changes on the text. I did, I had two comments and two suggestions. And now I wish to create a milestone for this proposal. To do so, just like on version 2.1, I close the document view. I check here the milestone list. And just as before, I click on add a milestone button. I can choose the context of my milestone. For example, I will create other and, and call it for demo and I click on create milestone and there here is where the differences start before on version 2.1 we only had a list uh, listing all the, the milestones that we had already created without 
anything else that we could uh, do on top of this milestone. And now we have the possibility to, on, upon selecting the milestone, we open a new window that we called the Milestone Explorer that shows you a snapshot of all the documents that are inside the proposal uh, at the time that the milestone was created. So I can see the explanatory memorandum, I can see both of the annexes, and I can see the legal text. And on top of that, I have also a snapshot of the annotations and suggestions that existed at the time that the milestone was created. This means that every comment and suggestion that were created after the milestone uh, will not be present here. This is exactly that, a snapshot in time of the annotations and suggestions. It is also important to mention that due to the fact that this is a snapshot in time of the proposal, uh, there is no sense in creating new annotations here, as so such functionality is disabled on the Milestone Explorer. I can only see what I have, I cannot create any new information here. I am now going to show you one of the biggest changes on Leos 3.0, which is the new Documents Version Management. So, let's open the legal text, and if you see here on the left pane, you have the table of content that we have already visited. We have on the right side pane the annotations, and if you notice down here at the bottom left, we have the versions pane. Clicking on it gives you access to the entire history of the document since it was first created when the proposal started. This means that all the major versions, all the milestone versions, and all the technical versions are stored here every time that the user changes the, the text. So, for example, if I change Article 1 and remove this word targets, and I click on Save and Close, you will see that I have a new uh, minor version created called 1.3.7, called Article 1 Updated. So, the user can immediately see what changed and at what time. And all the recent changes get compiled into this recent changes card. Now, imagine that the user wishes to create a snapshot of this document, of the legal text, but doesn't wish to do so through the milestone. He just wants a simple minor version, a simple version to discuss on a meeting, for example. To do that, you can go here on the Actions menu, click on Save this version, give it a title, for example, Preparation for, oh, it is badly written, Preparation for Mitten, clicks on Save, and what this does is picks all the recent changes that were uh, pending, compiles them in under a major version 1.4.0, and creates a new card here with the title that we gave it, the timestamp, and the author of this timestamp. So, you see how the, the history gets built up uh, along the time. Another functionality that the user has through this uh, version Spain is to check the version that it was, how it was on this, on the, 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 on the yeah. past. For example, imagine that the user wishes to see how the document was on version 1.0.5. To do so, he clicks on this, the actions, click on view this version, and he has on the right side pane uh, the version 1.0.5, as stated on the, on the title above. If this is not enough, and the user wishes to compare what changed since version 1.0.5, he can open the comparison view, go to the version 1.0.5, select it, then select the most recent version, which is the major version that we have created previously, and he sees on the right side pane all the text that was removed, all the text that was added, so all the changes that were done be, uh, between these two versions. And this is not limited just to the most recent change in the, in the one version in time. Any two versions can be selected for this comparison. So this leaves complete freedom to the drafter to select 
whatever he wants to, to see. Now, imagine that the user, by doing these comparisons or for whatever reason, wishes to go back in time to a previous version. To do so, imagine that the user wants to go back, okay, to the same version, 1.0.5. He can select on the actions, click on revert to this version. He gets a, a warning message uh, asking for confirmation. And when he confirms it, a new technical or minor version gets created, stating that the version was restored from version 1.0.5, and the user is now working on that version, but continues to have access to the entire history of the, of the document. So, uh, in a way, this is a complete revamp of the timeline window, uh, <clears throat> in a more seamless way to the user, and with given pot potentiality, because the user can now do the comparison with a finer granularity than he was able to do so uh, with the, the timeline window. Another improvement that we did with LEOS 3.0 are relative to the annexes. LEOS now fully supports level structured annexes and article structured annexes. So, when the user first creates a one, uh, one annex, this will be created based on level structure. And if we open it, you can see on the table of content to the left, all the levels that were, were already added on this example annex that I, I created before. So, if we add it to the table of content, you will see that you can have parts, chapter, title, section as before. And now we have this point 1.0, which is uh, a common tozo level element and the user can drag and drop new levels and when it saves the numbering algorithm gets into place and uh, automatically numbers the, the levels if the user wishes to switch or create a, a article based annex he can do so by creating for example a new annex which is by default created based on uh, a level structure. He opens it, he has the three levels by, by default, and he can go to the action menu, click on switch structure to article, and then he will get a uh, warning message stating that if he, do, if he continues with this operation, all the content on the current annex will be lost because uh, it's a completely different structure. Uh, and if he chooses to switch, you will see now that the annex is based on articles and no more in, in levels. And you can confirm this by going to the edition mode of the table of content. And you will see that even though you continue to have parts, chapter, title and section, instead of having points, you now have articles. And you can drag and drop the articles and edit them just like you do on, on legal text. So this is the only way to have an article-based uh, annex. Last but not least, I would like to point out a feature that, even though it's not uh, completely new to LEOS 3.0, it's a very important one to us. Uh, and I'm talking about the export to PDF, which is now being done uh, through a new library that was integrated in LEOS, uh, resulting of um, a very close collaborative work with our colleagues from Spain. And this is important to us exactly because it demarks what LEOS is supposed to be, which is a tool for the community developed by the community itself. So on this end note, I would like not only to thank you all for listening to me and to my presentation, but I would also like to leave a very special thank you to all our community members for being part of this effort. Uh, and I hope to see you on all the upcoming versions of LEOS. So thank you all very much.